road, there's never been above a 70% completion rate on the workshops um, evaluation in any case. If we putting more, of course, it's going to get lower. And every single year, there's always more submissions. Well, well knock on wood that it's going to, this trend is going to continue. But the, the, the number of MAG members doesn't increase. So if you're looking at the trends, you'll definitely have more sessions in any case to evaluate this year than last year. And we're adding more uh, for you to do. And we are and looking at the statistics, we're still not completing the work that you have to do. So, I mean, just mathematically, logically speaking, we have to be careful of the choices we make. Yeah. Chris? Oh, sorry. No, Bruna, this light hand. <laughs> Bruna, then Chris. Thanks. Um, no, just about the launches and awards. I agree with both arguments, I guess. I guess Chengatai had a very compelling point about um, community being able to launch or even um, do an award. Like I think one good example of that is the Equals Awards that's um, every year or more or less every year organized um, at the IGF or the APC publications that are often launched at the IGF. But at the same time, I was um, in the recent IGF, I was part of a launch that was framed as a panel. So I do believe that although people shouldn't um, um, like disrespect the guidelines for the sessions, it might be the case that sometimes they, they actually do and they try to game the system, right? And, and that's the whole conversation we've been having on the models like there is we are what we're trying to avoid in the end of the day is, is this sort of tendency of gaming the system or people submitting sessions that are different um, than the models we've originally um, envisioned and so on. So perhaps we can have um, a limited amount of launches and awards and something, let's say we can just put it as like 10, 15, and then make sure they happen either during lunch or at the end of the program. They don't conflict with sessions and then might be kind of a less compromising um, take on that. Then secretariat can still evaluate everything, but it just means that we don't have a uh, a launch that was supposed to be a launch and it is a panel conflicting with another panel on the same topic. I guess that's, that's what we want in the end of the day. Yes, no, I agree. We, we have to, whichever sessions we're doing, we have to endeavor to close the loopholes that somebody who doesn't get a workshop suddenly change another format into basically a workshop. So we have to work on that. And of course, it's how best to do it. Uh, one of the things that we're doing, of course, is that um, for all the application, we used to in the past for all the applica uh, for workshops would come first, uh, the deadline would come first, and then for the other sessions, they would come later. And then of course, there's that chance, oh, I didn't get a workshop, so let me go for this. So now the deadline, for all the sessions is exactly the same day at the same time. So you can't hop, you know, you can't um, shop around as such. Um, yes, uh, that you said um, some of the launches turn into a workshop, then we have to read the session description and make sure that it is not a discussion. It is basically an award um kind of setup on on the agenda and the time as well we have to make sure that the time is not big enough to have a discussion but big enough to to have the launch or, or the award so those are some of the things that we can do i suppose but it's very good to hear uh because all of us can't be in all these sessions but it's very good to hear the reports and then we can also investigate and one of the good things as well is that everything is recorded. So we can also go back and look at that recording and see. And sorry, the other thing we can do is that if somebody has abused a session type, we can um, make sure that next year 
they're not allowed to um, apply for that type of session and they skip a year, you know, things, things like that to um, try and close all these loopholes. Yeah. Uh, Chris, then Adam. Yep, thanks. Then Adam, no, sorry. No, sorry, I was just waiting to be unmuted. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm a little dubious or curious about Cengatai's suggestion of keeping track of people who abuse certain formats um, into the next year. That that yeah, <laughs> it seems difficult. Um, I was well, actually, I, I was going to say a, a bit what I said in the chat was maybe with the the shorter hours we can look at re. Really, um, invigorating um, prizes and launches as a sort of end of the day thing um, and using some of the sessions there. Now, I mean, what do you say, Chengatai, it's good to have these recorded and to have streamed and everything. So at that point, you're going back to essentially um, business as usual for the program. So maybe that's not actually going to help us. Um, but yeah, there are some ideas here about maybe a, a shorter session for awards, which which might make sense. And as I say, I think this this is something where it could still come in via the workshop proposal form with a tick box. So maybe and they, maybe that means you don't have to fill in the policy questions. I'm a little dubious about the policy questions section anyway, and have been for the last couple of years because I'm not entirely sure how useful it is. Um, but yeah, we can, we can look into that. And I think that's something that the work working group on, um, workshop proposals is obviously looking at as well. Um, so yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Adam? Hi, everybody. Sorry, I can't start my uh, start my video, but you don't need to see me. Oh, there it is, I think. Um, hi, Carol, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Adam Peake, I work for ICANN, but this comment is very much a personal observation as a MAG member for the previous three years. Um, about town halls, many of you will remember that I um, was quite excited about town halls last year, but I think we should be careful that I, I, at that time, I wasn't really trying to suggest that people were gaming the system. Um, that may have happened. It's not really for me to say. I do think that the instructions were unclear um, and people were using an opportunity to present their interests at the IGF. So my point really, and this also goes to and the point that Andrew, Andrew Campling made, is that things are starting to look very much the same. Um, and I would, as the MAG, look at the instructions you give about each of those forum, uh, those session forums, uh, formats rather. Workshops, I think we know what they are. Workshops of a dis discussion for engendering, engaging in discussion about a particular topic. Open for forums typically were for organizations with a global remit. Um, and I would put ICANN into that group. Thank you. We're not an IGO. We're not a trans. Um, a transnational organization, but we perform very similar functions and have always had an open forum to report on that work, to discuss that work and to take comment and uh, evaluation, if you like, on that work. So make the open forums more about a reporting format. What we've seen over previous years is um, organizations proposing things that look very much like workshops. They have speakers talking on a particular topic. The speakers do not belong to the organization that is um, presenting uh, the open forum. So I would look to the guidance that you give to allow people to understand what they should be applying for. Um, lightning talks, for example, I, I they initially they, the idea was um, talks to take place in a very short period of time, 10, 15, 20 minutes in an open central space. And people book those slots just as they would do um, any other process. And they present that issue. But it's not in a room. It's not a discussion per se, like a work mini workshop. It was, um, you know, so what I'm trying to say is, 
if you give us as people who will be applying for sessions clear guidance on what you want us to to do within that session for format i think there'll be a lot more clarity um i should also say and this goes to what changatai was saying about the amount of work and carol was saying about the amount of work that the mag is taking on uh, last year as a mag member i have to admit i did not complete all my 100 reviews of workshops i managed about 70 in the end i have various excuses for that please don't take on too much work it's unfair and it upsets the multi-stakeholder process i see shake changatai shaking his head at me again i think but that's fine um but yeah i'd be careful about the amount of work that you take on it is very hard work um and it's great if all mag members can review uh the work that they have to do with a mere culpa admitting that i was not one of those people thank you So, so one point that I want uh, to add, that even, even when we accept the proposals, we should have a second layer, uh, or should see, save at least 10 to 15 position or, or slot for, for the people who will complain back that their proposal are good and they would recommend a second review. So in the last, we just have a threshold and we step on that. I think it's good to give the community, at least uh, anyone who think that his proposal does not get a justified review or a refuse with scores is, is unfair. Give him another 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 chance to review. And I think if we can integrate this with the proposal with the with the workshop the process will be great. Thank you. Anna? Thanks, Carol. Just about, um, again, this proposal, Abdurrahman, I think it's obviously relevant to keep some sort of space or some leeway, right, to, to rediscuss or even like from the MAG conclusion. Then um, later in July, we understand that a certain workshop that felt in a different basket can perhaps come in and, and be added into the batch. But I, I, I would like maybe for us to readdress this later in the year because it's what we've been doing every year, right? Like if we say it's 70 workshops, then we approve 65, then we have five, one, five slots to negotiate. Or even if we have 70, then we feel like renegotiating um, the whole thing for everyone to, to add their thoughts and then we can move and shift things around or even grow the number by two or three workshops, even if this space allows, right? I just have a little bit of trouble for us to frame the discussion as in let's keep some slots because um, we need to also, again, defend and stand by the process that we approve and the process that um, PEACE is going to consider and think of together with the working group on workshops um, and, and then just stand by our process as the one that's transparent and the community is aware and it's also something that we can communicate more further on. And then... Just to wrap, I would make the same suggestion I made to Paul last year. Um, once we finalize the call for workshops and we have the selection, it would be very nice to have kind of a letter from both um, Carol and yourself saying these are the workshops we selected. These are addressing topics that are relevant to both local and global community and so on and so forth. So it would be very nice if this year we can have some sort of a chair and co-chair addressing the community after the, the workshop selection as well. That's all. Okay, we're at end of day. Um, so I think the only thing we have fairly finalized here is that town halls are out. Do I hear Adam throwing a party? I don't know. Um, Maybe we'll have the, um, with the launches, well, workshops, a stat, open forums is the same. <clears throat> um, so we're looking at launches and awards, and we're hoping that we can reduce the time for launches and award, and maybe also reduce the amount of spaces for launches and awards. Um, I suppose we could look, we could ask the work group on um, workshop processes, maybe to extend looking at 
um, how we can ensure that launches and awards stay launches and awards and not become um, workshops to look at their their structure. Um, Lido, Lido, look at me like what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's a few things to to mull on. Um, I don't know if we could do some kind of new type of calculation or outlook tomorrow to say what happens if we reduce the, the town halls, what happens if we reduce the launches and awards to 30 minutes? Um, would that make a difference? Are we helping the schedule or not helping the schedule? But we have to agree on how many workshops there. It's 225, still too many. Sorry, I forgot the the DCs and and the NRIs. I attended their um, coordinated meetings, and um, I don't know if Ansha wants to to speak to that. So they are trying to come up with a solution to the problem as well. Anja? Thank you, Ben. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it's not me. <laughs> yes, thank you very much here for giving me the floor. Uh, I can speak just a little bit on the history uh, to brief and inform the MAG this year on the vision and the ratio for introducing the NRI session. So as Marcus said, likewise for the DCs, these sessions were, types of sessions were introduced in 2016 uh, by the MAG during the chairing of Lynn Senamore. And uh, the whole concept of this and the reasoning was to support the NRI's cooperation among themselves because we already saw that in a course of two, three years until the time, the number of the NRI's um, almost doubled and started really to grow exponentially. Um, over the time, these sessions really uh, shown to be a great way to uh, foster internal cooperation among the NRIs, but also to inform the global community about the local specificities on the issues that are important to people in various countries and regions. And as the number of NRIs is growing, that means that we have a better sample to work with, meaning more inclusive, more reflective of the world, what's happening. There is a difference between the workshops, all other types of sessions and the NRI sessions just in the methodology on how, we're, how the sessions are built. They have a strong bottom-up component, and that's the main difference. Every time an NRI session is developed and a proposal, that means that a strong bottom-up uh, call to the community was issued for the NRI coordinators, multi-stakeholder organizing committees to understand what's a particular priority and what are the issues that we want to bring to the agenda. Uh, the Secretariat works of course, completely neutrally, we respect the NRI's um, modalities, but the Secretariat is also very careful um, and attentive to the fact that to make sure that the NRI sessions do not duplicate with anything else in the program. Uh, and I think for the past, uh, especially three, four years, the taking stock call, for example, showed to be very positive in terms of the feedback towards these, these sessions. But I have to uh, also uh, say that um, in respect to the NRI's main session, maybe we can work on the wording for that main session. I don't think necessarily we can call it just the NRI's main session because we had a very um, complex discussion in 2017, I believe, on the same subject, why the NRIs are having their own main session. And at that time, it was decided that this will be a main session where the MAG 
and the NRIs will work together, but respecting the NRIs working modalities and the working modality, which makes a difference between um, in comparison to how other main sessions are built is only the bottom up component. That's the only difference. So all the MAG members, facilitators, uh, however you would like to give a title, are most welcome to join the NRI school and to work with the NRI colleagues, but just respecting that bottom up component because for those sessions, it's very important that they reflect the um, intentions, the demand that comes from people, from all stakeholders. Certainly, I won't take time to speak about the methodology on how you reach up, uh, reach out to that, to achieve that bottom-up um, components implementation. But I can, I can certainly maybe uh, email to the list what was the methodology if that's of interest to the Mag. So I think the ma main session really is just. One of all uh, main sessions with that difference that we work specifically with the NRI's network to understand what is the bottom up, bottom up view and what is the topic that's of interest to now more than 168 countries and regions. And final thought before I conclude, um, the NRI's also we discussed quite extensively uh, two years ago that having five collaborative sessions, which are workshop like sessions just with this strong bottom up component, Maybe too too much for the program that we saw is is, getting, is um, gaining more um, demand from other stakeholders, and so the number of collaborative sessions was reduced uh, strategically for that purpose to support the program to only three. And uh, the program last year managed to accommodate the duration of those sessions to be ninety minutes. So that's as much as I can. So three sessions, which are collaborative, one main session, uh, NRI's working with the MAG, and there is also a session, which is a working um, session uh, that's happening on day zero. So we're, the NRI's are not taking any space in the formal program. Thank you. Question and and then we'll we'll close out. Uh, no, we, ha we have to close out, sorry. <laughs> Just a question to, um, I almost called you Bram because you said Bram seat. Um, with, the, with the DCs, um, can we group them um, in terms of whatever sub-themes we come up with? And would that reduce, make them work together? DCs, I think. Okay. Marcus. That is, I think, some discussion the DCs would welcome to see, as I said, they would like to have a better thematic integration into the program of the IGF. How this can be done, that obviously would need to be discussed. But at the same time, like uh, Anya said for the NRIs, the DCs also value highly their bottom-up character and their grassroots character, and they are also their independence. So it's a, a cooperation and not a subordination. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, what's next on the agenda? So the expected outputs of the day, let's see if we, we met our uh, indicators, <laughs> decide on IGF 2024 overarching theme, title or program. Um, I'd say we about 80% there. Um, endorse the design of the overall program structure and flow. We might only be 50% there. Um, endorse types and total of number of sessions. That's about only 50% there as well. Um, so we're going to try to rework our schedule for tomorrow so that we can um, complete. And hopefully the host team will come back with um, a rework of the, the main titles. So you want to talk about tonight? So we just let the host country talk about um, plans for tonight and anything else. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, as usual, uh, very uh, fruitful discussion. Uh, it's time you get to take some rest from the discussion and enjoy the city. Uh, tonight, you are all invited uh, to Dreya. Dreya is a very historical place where the inception of Saudi Arabia started, and uh, the transportation will be available at this hotel at 7.30, and then the dinner will be start serving at 8 uh, p.m. tonight. So please 
uh, join us and you are all of you are welcome uh, to to join us tonight thank you very much Thank you very much for time. They're going to be the bus in the lobby. Okay. 7.30 in the lobby. And um, check the weather before you come out because <laughs> make sure you bundle up if, it, if it's cold. Okay? That's experience speaking there. <laughs> See you all later tonight. All right. Thank you. Thank you.